myself until about 2008. I'm going to tell you just about the germ of this book. Uh, in the summer of 2002, my father was very ill. He, he was 86 years old and he had an operation. Uh, he was very weak and tired, but mainly he was extremely depressed. If he was not going to cheer up, he was not going to live much longer. I found myself taking care of him and my mother, uh, trying to figure out some sort of home care for them, and spending a month with them in their condo in Amherst, Massachusetts. And I realized right away that my main task was just to cheer this old man up. Uh, and I got the bright idea of reading bedtime stories to them. My father had always read stories to me and my siblings when we were kids. Out of a fabulous fat book of stories called Tellers of Tales. And I had the notion of finding that book in their bookcases and telling them to pick a story and reading the story. I found it. There it was, only a little worse for wear, as if you've been waiting all these years for this time. And that night, when they were all tucked in, my mother in their big 60-year-old bed, and my dad in his little red hospital bed drawn up next to hers, I showed them this book, and I told them to pick a story. And they picked a story called Uncle Fred Flint's Mind. I P G Woodhouse. This was a story that we'd all love when we were little children because it was the funniest of the 100 short stories in the book. But I'd pretty much forgotten. But I opened the book and I started reading this story, Uncle Fred Fred's Bob. And as I read it, more and more of it came back to me. And the characters revealed themselves and the complications kicked in. And one by one, I remember those things that we thought were so damn funny all those years ago. And then, in the middle of this reading, my father started to laugh. And literally came back to life through the power and the joy of this story. And from that moment, I began to think more and more about what it is that I do. I basically tell this story in the preface of this book. And I'm going to read just the very end of this because it's, it's just a suggestion of what got me started, what lit the fuse that ended up being this book. He had given me another gift, although we never lived to see it bear fruit. The period I spent with my parents was one of the most significant in my life. In that memorable month, that Woodhouse story was the most memorable hour. I had spent my entire adult, adult life acting in plays, movies, and television shows. I told stories. I had a gratifying, fun, and prosperous career. Only infrequently had I paused to plumb the mysteries of my peculiar occupation. That night, however, everything came into focus. Sitting in my parents' bedside and reading them a story, trying to help two old people feel better, came to seem like a distillation of everything my profession is about. In the years to come, my thoughts kept returning that evening, even after my father was long gone. Finally, spurred on by the events of that night, I decided to write this book. It took me about four years to even start, it took me about three years to do it, I only finished it in December, uh, and oh. <laughs> I post it. <laughs> the book, of course, is all about me, but as you might guess, it's substantially about my family too, uh, mainly about my father, who was a man of the theater, a producer of regional theater and the creator of Shakespeare festivals, I grew up in his fantastic world, the world of American repertory theater. And uh, even though I sort of wanted to avoid going into the family business, it was almost an inevitability. Inexorably, I was drawn into the acting profession. Uh, 
it tells stories of my early years of schooling, living in eight different towns and going to eight different public schools as I followed the fortunes of my father. Uh, the whole family did as if we lived in a gypsy wagon. My years at Harvard when I basically just decided I'd better go with the flow, uh, acting is what I was destined to do. My years in England studying, my years unemployed in New York, my early years in rep, and finally kind of succeeding on Broadway. Even, e even my dipping my toe into the movies and TV for the first time. The memoir ends in the year 1980, which I regard as kind of uh, the watershed year of my life, the intermission, if you will. But by that time, I had, because of the theater, I had been, I had gradually turned into the actor that I am today. So, of course, that is, that, that is principally what the book is about, but it's also my, my ruminations, not on just the how of acting, but the why of acting. This peculiar, this mysterious question, why do I do what I do? Why do people come to watch me do it? What is this peculiar ritual, this peculiar transaction we strike? Uh, there's, so, mainly the, the book is fun stories, but there's a, I, I give a little, a little thought to these larger issues too. I'm going to read just a one.